Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our today's practice question, we have a small announcement. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS is happy to launch a new initiative called as UPSC Knowledge Series. This series will go live on our YouTube channel from 6th of June 2022. Our distinguished faculty will be handling these sessions and this will basically deal with the static part of the syllabus. As part of the UPSC Civil Services examination, we have number of initiatives which cover the dynamic portions. We have our daily CNA, we have the big news, we have the daily quiz to help you further reach your magical destiny of Labasna. We have taken up the static part as well. This will be live on our YouTube channel every day at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So please do tune in from 6th of June 2022. Let's get started and look into the first question. With reference to death penalty in India, which of the following statements is are correct? The Judicial Magistrate of First Class and Court of Sessions can award death sentence but the High Court needs to confirm it for the death sentence to be valid. The Law Commission of India in its 262nd report recommended the retention of death penalty in India. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to death penalty. Let us try and understand what are these options. What do we understand by death penalty? Death penalty is also called as the capital punishment. This is about snatching away the life of a person with the procedure established by law. When we look into the first option, the judicial magistrate of first class and court of sessions can award death sentence but the high court needs to confirm it for the death sentence to be valid. This statement is partially right and partially wrong. The first part of the statement is wrong. That is, the judicial magistrate of the first class does not have the permission to impose the death penalty. This power is given to the sessions court and in case the sessions court does impose death penalty on a person, in that case it has to be validated, permission has to be given by the high court of that relevant state. So remember, the judicial magistrate of the first class does not have the power to impose the death penalty it is only from the sessions court and then even the high court would be able to impose the death penalty followed by which the supreme court would also be able to say yes to the death penalty as well but the judicial magistrate of the first class does not have this power this power is explicitly given to the sessions court then to the high court and finally to the supreme court and not to the judicial magistrate of the first class so the first statement is wrong when we look into the second statement the law commission of india in its 262nd report recommended the retention of the death penalty in India. This is once again a wrong statement. Why? That is because the 262nd Law Commission of India report clearly said that there has to be abolition of death penalty for all offences except for those related to terrorism. Why does the Law Commission of India say so? That is because when you consider the deterrent effect, what is the deterrent effect? It is making that particular person not commit a crime because there is penal provision that is already present in the law books. So according to the Law Commission of India, we have life imprisonment which is already acting as a deterrent. So life imprisonment should be enough and death penalty should not be imposed for all offenses except for terrorism. Why does it include terrorism? That is because let's say for example we take one of the terrorist who is there in the custody of the police officers or any of the investigating agencies so what can the terrorists do they may take certain people as hostage and they can also ask for swapping of these hostages for that particular terrorist so in order to prevent this whole hostage crisis what we have is this recommendation saying that for all offenses what we can have is life imprisonment as the deterrent we need not have to have death penalty but for terrorism related issues, we can go ahead with death penalty. The law commission also goes on to say that when it comes to the death penalty, once it is imposed, we cannot bring back that particular person. And as a result, the death penalty does not serve the penological goal of deterrence any more than life imprisonment, says the Law Commission of India. And another reason given by Law Commission of India, it says that the restorative and rehabilitative aspects of justice are lost if it comes to death penalty. So it has come up with this recommendation. So the answer to this would be none. Now let's look into the next practice question. 
Consider the following statements with respect to liquid mirror telescope. It is the country's first and largest liquid mirror telescope as well as the largest in Asia. It is located at an altitude of 2450 meters at Devastal Observatory Campus of Aryabhata Research Institute of Observational Sciences. The telescope was designed and built at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore. Which of the above statements is are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the liquid mirror telescope. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, the first statement is right. It is the country's first and largest liquid mirror telescope as well as the largest in Asia as well. So the first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, yes, it is located at an altitude of 2450 meters at the Devastal Observatory campus of Aryabhata Research Institute of Observational Sciences. This statement is also right. But when it comes to the third statement, the telescope was designed and built at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore. This is a wrong statement. That is because the telescope was designed and built by Advanced Mechanical and Optical Systems Corporation and the Central Spatial Delege in Belgium. So the third statement statement is wrong. So the major instrumentation funding was jointly provided by Canada, Belgium, while India will be responsible for the operations and upkeeping of this telescope. What is so unique about this particular telescope? The unique characteristic of this telescope happens to be it will monitor the sky for all the transitory and variable objects such as supernova, gravitational lenses, space debris, asteroids, so on and so forth. So it will survey the entire sky, make it possible to up observe several galaxies and other astronomical sources just by staring at the strip of the sky that passes overhead. Also remember, this particular telescope will be operating every night for the next five years. It will carry out daily imaging except in the month of June and August. That is because in the month of June and August, there will be monsoon and as a result, a precautionary note is taken to protect the instruments from the humid conditions as well as the monsoon. So except in the month of June and August where it will be suspended, it will be in operation for the next five years and it will try and understand the variable objects like supernova, space debris, asteroids, so on and so forth. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement. Sufiana Garana of Kashmir is the only Hindustani classical music Garana from Jammu and Kashmir. Santur is an Indian string music instrument. Which of the above statements is are incorrect? Do note it is asking for the incorrect statement. So the answer to this is none. Why? That is because both the statements are right. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu speaks about Pandit Bhajan Sapori who passes away. And when we speak about Pandit Bhajan Sapori, he happens to be a master in Sufiana Garana and he was also known for playing one of the string instruments called as Santur. So what is this Garana? When we speak about Garana, what is it? That is part of the Hindustani music. In Hindustani music, you have different types of Garanas. Garanas basically refer to family or a lineage where it is carried forward from multiple generations. So there is one practice of music which can be dedicated to a particular family. This family or a certain section of the people learn this particular type of music and ultimately they push it forward in their hereditary lineage or it can be a group of people. These people would have learned that particular music style and they would make sure that they put it across different sections of the people. So Garana's focus exclusively on vocal or instrumental music and at the same time there can be a combination of both vocal as well as the instrumental music. So when we speak about Garana, they have a lineage of musicians with a distinctive performance style. They have a certain school of thought or tradition and often they combine all these aspects and ultimately what we have is called as Garana. So when it comes to Pandit Bhajan Sopari, they had a Garana called as the Sufiana Garana. So if you look into the statement, the Sufiana Garana of Kashmir is the only Hindustani classical music Garana from Jammu and Kashmir. This happens to be the right statement. 
So this Garana has a unique combination of both vocal as well as the instrument music with specialization in Santur, Sitar, Sehatar, Vasul, so on and so forth. So when we speak about Santur, Santur also happens to be a stringed instrument. So this has its origins with respect to the Shaivite tradition of Kashmir. It also brings earlier family of string instruments like the Veena. So in the ancient Sanskrit text, we have something called as the Shatatantri Veena. Shatatantri basically means that there are about 100 strings and this Shatatantri Veena in Kashmir was used for various Vedic rituals and is also associated with sacred music from earlier times till date. Santur is not a folk instrument but instead it is a sacred classical instrument. So remember, we are speaking about Pandit Bhajan Sapori, who happens to be one of the persons who carried forward the legacy of Sufiana Garana and he happened to be a person who played Santur, which happens to be a stringed instrument. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements with respect to Guru Arjan Dev is our correct? He laid the foundation of Harmandir Sahib Gurudwara, popularly known as Golden Temple in Amritsar. He was the founder of major cities of Punjab such as Tan Taran Sahib and Kartarpur. He was executed by Aurangzeb on charges of helping Prince Kusru with money and prayer. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this ad on the Hindu speaks about Guru Arjan Dev. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, he laid the foundation of Harmandir Sahib Gurudwar, which is also popularly known as Golden Temple in Amritsha. Please remember, this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. He was the founder of major cities of Punjab, such as Taran Taran Sahib, as well as Kartarpur, and he was executed not by Aurangzeb, but instead it happened to be Jahangir. So, because Jahangir executed, this statement happens to be a wrong statement, and the answer to this would be 1 and 2 only. Let's look at some of the important factual data with respect to Guru Arjan Dev. When we speak about Sikhism, we have 10 Gurus. Who are those? We have Guru Nanak Ji, Guru Angar Ji, Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, Guru Hargobin Ji, Guru Har Rai Ji, Guru Har Kishan Ji, Guru Ted Bahadur Ji, as well as Guru Govind Singh. These are the important Sikh Gurus when it comes to this religion. And when we speak about Guru Arjan Dev, he happened to be the fifth Guru. He composed Adi Granth in 1604 and Adi Granth happens to be the scripture of the Sikhs. So he was credited with compiling the Adi Granth and was a staunch advocate of tolerance, equality and pluralism. He completed the construction of Golden Temple, founded the town of Tan Taran Sahib. He requested Mian Mir to lay the cornerstone of Harmandir Sahib. He was executed by Jahangir on charges of helping Prince Kusru with the money and prayer. Why did Jahangir go about killing Guru Arjan Dev? That is because he was threatened by the popularism of Guru Arjan Dev. He also felt that large-scale conversions to Sikh religion was happening at the cost of some of the other religions in that particular place and at the same time he also went on to bless Jahangir's rebellious son Kusru which is why he went on to execute Guru Archandev. He was also claimed as Shahidan Disartaj which happens to be the crown of martyrs. Now let's look into the next practice question. Water can dissolve more substances than any other liquid because it is dipolar in nature. It is a good conductor of heat. It has high value of specific heat. It is an oxide of hydrogen. The answer to this is it is bipolar in nature. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. So when it comes to the water, water molecule has a positive and a negative pole due to which there is uneven distribution of electrons within it, which is why it is called as dipolar. This dipolar nature of water molecule helps in dissolving other polar molecules very easily and as a result, we have the A option as the answer. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is PM Care Scheme for Children. What is the context? We have the Prime Minister Narendra Modi who has released benefits under the PM Cares for Children scheme for children who were orphaned by the pandemic. Let us try and understand what is this scheme all about. PM Cares for Children was launched in May 2021 to ensure rehabilitation and education of children who lost caregivers to 
COVID between March 11, 2020, when COVID was declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization up until February 28, 2022. So what exactly happens in case there are children who have lost both their parents or a surviving parent or a legal guardian or adoptive parent in order to make sure that these children do not suffer to make sure that they are provided with rehabilitation and education we have the prime minister of india and the government of india came up with this particular initiative called as pm care scheme for the children this is funded by pm cares and with the support of the ministry of women and child development as its nodal agency in the center the scheme will provide a monthly stipend to each child from the age of 18 years and a lump sum amount of rupees 10 lakh on a attaining the age of 23 the prime minister said that the benefits also include an annual scholarship of rupees 20000 for school students and monthly financial support of 4000 for the daily needs till 6 years of age children will receive support from the anganwadi services for supplementary nutrition preschool education and for those less than 10 years of age admission shall be provided in any near school government or government aided school or it can also be kendriya vidyalayas or private schools as as a day scholar in private schools, tuition fees will also be exempted. The scheme will also utilize existing schemes and programs. For instance, two sets of free uniform and textbooks shall be provided under Samagra Shiksha Abhyan. Additionally, the scheme will place the orphan children either in the care of relatives and family or with the child care institutions or in the signing school, Navodaya Vidyalaya or other residential schools. Health coverage will also be given to these children. They would be also given the Ayushman card as well. Counseling would be given to these children through the Sambad helpline for all the psychological as well as the emotional help. What is the process to select the beneficiaries? Basically, they have to go to this website called as the PM cares for children dot in they have to fill in all the required documents as well and the child welfare committee will refer this to the district magistrate the district magistrate will look into this application he may accept or he can reject the application and if so accepted the relevant bank account details will be opened for all these children who have lost their parents because of COVID-19. Other registration for all these children are mandatory to receive the support under the scheme and if the same is not available, this should be communicated to the district magistrate and the district magistrate should take care to facilitate the benefits of this particular program. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So that is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.